Good evening. Twin City voters will be visiting the polls tomorrow as the general primary election kicks off throughout Illinois. We've got the wrap-up of some local and national candidates as they fight for the top of the list with voters. In McLean County, Republicans Gordon Ropp and William Brady compete for a spot in the General Assembly for the 88th District. Dan Rutherford, Les Conklin, and Harvey Traub vie for the number one vote in the 87th District. Republicans William Anderson and Dan Brady are the only two contenders in the race for county coroner. John Fries and David Fint are racing to fill the vacancy for judge of the 11th Judicial Court. And turning to the presidential race, President George Bush and front-runner Patrick Buchanan are rivals on the Republican ballot, while top candidates Bill Clinton, Jerry Brown, and Paul Songus battle for the top notch on the Democratic ballot. And finally, Carol Mosley Braun, Al Hofeld, and Alan Dixon rival on the Democratic ballot for United States Senator. And voters in Bloomington Normal can make their choice at the Law and Justice Center in Bloomington from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. With the Illinois primary less than 24 hours away, the Republican presidential candidates are getting in some last-minute campaigning. George Bush is visiting Chicago today. He'll make a stop at a youth center before attending a fundraising dinner. Pat, Buch Pat Buchanan, Bush's main opponent, is focusing on Michigan for his campaign stops. Michigan's primary is also scheduled for tomorrow. Arkansas Governor Bill Clinton is still seething over a confrontation with former California Governor Jerry Brown during a Chicago debate. Clinton and Brown clashed in the Democratic candidates' debate last night when Brown accused Clinton of funneling state money to his wife's law firm. A charge Clinton denies. Earlier in Chicago, Clinton said Brown ought to get out of the race and called Brown's accusations insulting. He told reporters, quote, this process will be controlled by the American people, not by bad-mouthing. Brown says Clinton has, quote, a scandal of the week going here. He says he'll keep up his attack on Clinton until the Democratic convention this summer. Meanwhile, Paul Songus is doing his best to avoid the confrontation between his rivals. Songus says he got lots of encouragement today as he greeted com commuters at a Chicago train station. He says he thinks voters are perceiving him as the only alternative. Songus won't say how, say how badly his campaign would suffer if he loses tomorrow's two primaries, but he vows to go on to the next races in Connecticut and New York. Area voters will decide if Unit 5's new tax referendum will pass in tomorrow's election. TV10's Dwayne Chenault has the details. Superintendent Bob Melito says the referendum will benefit Unit 5 students. We're calling it it's a vote for students, it's a vote for our community, it's an investment in education. Uh, it will build one new high school, one grade school, a remodel Norman Community High School and will allow us to buy 50 acres of land on the east side of town for a future, future high school. Betty Thomas, president of Citizens for Responsible School Management, opposes the referendum. Mrs. Thomas, who is a certified public accountant, says the numbers just don't add up for this referendum. We're in the red right now. It was budgeted in last summer and voted in voted in the fall budget that was adopted for this year, the 91, 92 year. If passed, the new tax rate will take effect in May of 1993. Superintendent Melito says that taxes will increase for community homeowners. What it will cost an average taxpayer who is in a $90,000 home, it will cost you $10 a month or work down to 31 cents a day. Education in Unit 5 has always been emphasized in the normal community. For some, this referendum stands for continuing that quality education for Unit 5 students. For others, it represents an unnecessary increase in taxes. For TV10 News, I'm Dwayne Chenault. U.S. Senator Alan Dixon is bringing out leaders of the state Democratic Party to show support for the incumbent's bid for a third term in the Senate. Democratic challenger Carol Mosley Braun will be visiting fasting choreographer Catherine Dunham, who is fasting to protest the forced return of Haitian refugees. Braun is planning the visit along with Reverend Jesse Jackson and deposed Haitian President Jean Bertrand Arisaid. Challenger Albert Hofeld is campaigning in Chicago and shaking hands with University of Illinois students to show his support in Illinois. Next up on TV10, help is on the way for Twin Cities gang problems. And I assistant Thomas Wallace is opening doors for our financially needed students. That's next. Stay with us. It's the end. 
Everyone on our planet can benefit by recycling. Aluminum cans can be recycled to help keep our environment clean. All you have to do is take your cans to local recycling centers. Just do what you can, and it doesn't have to be the end of the world as we know it. As we know it, and I feel fine. Tony, that physics exam was so difficult. What can we do to relieve some of the stress? No kidding, that was so hard. But I have a perfect solution. Why don't we go exercise and relieve some of this tension? It's that simple. Some sort of exercise, whether it be simple or difficult, can lead to a more healthy, stress-free life. Exercise, it's worth it. The continuing economic problems of the Illinois state government is affecting more students who depend on financial help to get through college. Carmen Lewis files this report. Illinois' economic problems are weighing heavily on higher education. More students each year are finding they lack the funds to go to college. ISU President Thomas Wallace says although Illinois is ninth in per capita income, the state tax structure does not enable it to collect a relative amount of revenue. ...is that we have the second lowest tax rate in the nation, and we do not have a progressive income tax structure, so that we are not collecting uh, very much revenues uh, relative to the wealth of the state. Illinois ranks very low in terms of the percent of income that is collected for taxes. Wallace says a better economy will not necessarily solve the financial problems in higher education. He says the road to recovery is through new economic strategies. President Wallace says one of the proposals considered for ISU is a tuition hike to subsidize financially needy students. So what we're trying to say, and other states are beginning to look at this also, is that we need to have actually higher tuitions, but that a portion of the tuition is given to financial aid to lower middle income families. So what you really do is make it cheaper for lower middle income families in the future and make it more expensive for the higher income families. Reporting for TV10 News, I'm Carmen Lewis. Illinois Senate Minority Leader Pate Phillip appears to be changing his mind. Phillip has reversed his position on involving the use of the Senate in his fight against a new Chicago area airport. Phillip now says he will join with other Republicans to block the formation of a regional airport authority and a proposed new airport at Lake Calumet. Phillip's statement at a rally last night reverses a position he has held recently as last Friday when he said he wouldn't involve the Senate GOP caucus in the battle. Bloomington will have four new police officers and a new fire station if the city council passes the new budget. The four new officers will combat the drug and gang problem in Bloomington. Two of the officers will be added after May 1st. One will be assigned to the juvenile division as a detective. The other two officers will be added after November 1st. Bloomington Police Chief Mike Miller says these two officers will start a new proactive unit to combat dr problems that arise on a daily basis. Bloomington Mayor Jesse Smart says the meeting to hammer out the details of the budget went smoothly, and he expects the City Council to pass the new budget at their April 13th meeting. In the fire department. Bloomington Mayor Jesse Smart believes the City Council will pass the record $65 million budget. Smart says the budget has three main issues, the police department, the fire department, and engineering. Smart says the addition of new officers will have a major impact on their budget of anywhere between fifty and seventy-five thousand dollars. According to Smart, the police department will increase by four officers this year and twenty-four over the next five years. Smart says the four new officers this year are to combat the gang and drug problem in the city. The other twenty officers will be added in proportion to the city's growth rate. We've had two officers immediately after the first of May and then two more to be done after the first of January to start beefing up for all the special needs that we have with drugs and gangs. Bloomington Police Chief Mike Miller says the officers will have to undergo the standard six-month training period before they are ready. Miller says the two officers in November will head up the proactive unit to settle problems arising on a daily and weekly basis. According to Miller, the daily problems fall into four areas. Drugs, gangs, major crimes, and crime prevention. Miller's main budgetary concern is a new mainframe computer to handle increase in data. Currently we're hooked into the mainframe upstairs and we're fast becoming a nuisance to the other departments because of our the gigantic amount of information we're inputting and the 
requirements that we have. Smart says the budget allocates funds for a new fire station on the southeast side of Bloomington. The new station will give Bloomington four facilities to improve response time. The new station will supplement the McGregor Street station. The third main area of the budget is engineering. Mayor Smart says this budget calls for $10 million of improvements 